So hi all. Welcome to my channel. Today's learning on synchronous movement, construction of details, and working. So in the previous session, we have discussed about the production of the rotating magnetic field in a three-phase supply, and it's a synchronous field. Now we will discuss about the constructional details of synchronous motor and the construction of the stator and as well as the rotor. And principle of operation of a synchronous motor and methods of starting. Characteristics of characteristics features of synchronous motor. So this is a synchronous motor. It is an electrical machine. So directly we cannot say it is a synchronous motor or else induction motor or whatever it is, uh, which type of motor, but yes, by seeing it, we can directly say it is an electrical motion. Okay, constructional details of a synchronous motor. A three-phase synchronous generator is essentially composed of stator and rotor. Every machine has stator and rotor. Okay, in the same way, the synchronous motor also has stator and rotor. So this is a stator. And here it is a rotor. And cross sectional of a large turbo machine. So here, if you observe, so till here it is a stator part, and this is a rotor. Here, if you see, there is a rotor winding inside, and this is a stator winding. This is very, and this is shaft. This is housing and cooling ducts, and these are the connections. So see how large the machine is. So these are the stator slots, and this is a stator frame. So the stator is a stationary member of a rotating machine. So stator frame. It is a DC in a DC machine. The outer frame serves to carry the magnetic flux and holding stator field poles. In alternators, stator frames is meant for only holding stator stampings and windings. So this is a stator. So if you see, this is a yoke or a frame, stator frame. And this stator is holding the stator conductors. They will be sorry. So this is a stator core which is laminated. Copper conductors for winding. And this is a terminal box. And this is an eyebrow for carry. And these are the stator slots. And sagging features of a stator frame. So what are the features of the stator? Okay. The stator is made up of a soft iron or silicon steel laminations. So silicon steel is used to reduce hysteresis losses. And core is laminated to reduce the eddy current losses. So in any machine, if silicon steel is used, it means... It is used to reduce the hysteresis losses, and the many more. I mean, the most of the machines are laminated, either the stator or the rotor, also. Okay, it is only to reduce the eddy current losses. The three phase winding bound in a stator slot with 120 electrical apart. So the laminations are stamped out in complete rings. Or in segments, the laminations are insulated from each other. The laminations have spaces between them for allowing the cooling air to pass through it. So these are all other features. Okay, the slots for housing the armature conductors lies along the inner periphery of the core. These are the slots. Okay, these are the conductors. If you observe here, there is a binding and also insulation between the copper bars. 
and these are the laminated iron coated slots and this is a metal frame so this is a very large generator if you see here there is a steps thing so it is very large generator so these are the stator and this is a rotor and here if you see there is a space between the conductor conductor and also insulation conductor okay so stator of a large salient pole hydro generator inset shows the insulated conductors and spaces here so rotor so now we will discuss about the rotor and here the rotor is a rotating member of the rotating machine yes sir. so stator is a stationary part and rotor is a rotating part so here we have two types of rotor in a synchronous motor that is salient pole rotor and non salient pole which is also called as cylindrical type rotor so this is a salient pole rotor so here will it has been given damper windings it may be there or it may not be there and these are the laminated core there is a slip rings and pressures and concentrated field winding so this is an actual salient core it has a large number of projected poles okay see here and their force bolted or dovetailed onto heavy magnetic plates of cast iron or steel such machines have large diameter and short axial length if you observe here the diameter is very large and the axial length is small for a salient pole the poles and pole shoes are laminated to minimize heating due to eddy currents all are laminated and joined together used for low and medium speed machine so salient pole rotor types are used only for low and medium speed applications so if you observe here so salient pole rotor this is a stator and this is a rotor which is rotating so these are some of the pictures there is a slip ring it is used for low speed so here this is a dc excitation winding which will excite the separately A smooth cylindrical rotor. Now about the smooth cylindrical rotor. So the rotor consists of smooth solid forked steel cylinder having a number of slots, and these rotor poles are non-salient and do not project out. So here, these poles do not project. So it is called non-salient also. and the salient poles uh, uh, rotor is also called as projected poles and it was used for turbine driven generators hence this is used for very high speed such rotors are designed for two poles so two poles type of generator so these uh, uh, rotors are designed for two poles only if there is a two pole means that is for highest speed and it is used for steam turbine driven generators such rotors are designed for two pole and the rotor field winding is excited by the separate dc supply through slip rings so here this is a, a large generator rotor picture so this, this point is a fitting blocks this is a locking key and to turn bends slip layer retaining rings 
the rotor carries a special winding called a damper winding. So even in the saline phone also we have observed and the damper winding also we are observing that there is a damper winding in a rotor. So we'll discuss what is a damper winding and what is the use of damper winding in, in a while. Okay. So damper winding consists of a short-circuited copper bar embedded in a Voltage. Yes, here only it is given. So damper winding helps to develop a starting torque and prevent handling. So damper winding, it is a extra winding. Uh, other, I mean, like it is uh, not included in a rotor winding. It is an external uh, external winding. We have included in the rotor only for the two purposes. That is to develop a torque at the time of starting and also to prevent hunting. Hunting is nothing but it is like a shaking of the rotor. Okay, so in order not to uh, oscillate uh, the rotor, so we, we are using a damping winding and also very important that for uh, getting a starting torque. As we know that a synchronous motor is not a self-starting motor, for starting purpose, we will use damper winding. So, this, if you observe, this is a cylindrical rotor. Uh, see, the poles are been not at all projected outside. Okay. So, for this uh, uh, cylindrical type, uh, uh, more rotors have a shorter diameter and a longer axial length. This is a stator and this is a rotor. It is known that when two unlike poles are brought near each other, there exists a force of attraction between the two poles, and the two magnets are now said to be magnetically locked. Yes. So here, for example, if this is a stator pole and this is a rotor pole here. Yeah. So, when stator pole and rotor pole of a different uh, poles, then there will be a chance of, uh, there will be a force development that is an attraction force uh, and uh, that force uh, it will be the two magnets uh, when they come near and that is said to be a magnetic lock. So, if one of the magnet is rotating, and the, uh, and the other one also starts rotating in the same direction with the same speed as shown in the figure. So if uh, here already magnetic locking has done, here if N starts rotates, then S also starts rotates because due to the magnetic locking. Okay. So this condition is referred to as a magnetic locking. So the principle of operation. Now, we are supplying a three-phase winding. Three-phase supply to a three-phase winding. So, when a three-phase winding is fed by a three-phase supply, a magnetic flux of constant magnitude, but rotating at synchronous speed is produced. So here. We have given a three phase supply to a stator, and in this stator, there is a production of a rotating magnetic field will set up. Once we have given a three phase supply to a stator, then a three phases three alternating currents will produce three uh, magnetic fluxes. And these three magnetic fluxes will produce a resultant flux and which is rotating. And having a constant magnitude that is 1.5 times of maximum flux and it is rotating at a single speed. Okay, so this is NS and this is SS. So it is rotating at
for when three supply given to armature. The armature established a constant magnitude of rotating magnetic field. And the field rotates at synchronous speed in eight gap. And state are poles marked by NS and SS. And these are rotating at synchronous speed, say, clockwise direction. Now, when rotor is excited with DC supply, and if we observe there is a damper winding here, the rotor winding establishes constant magnetic poles on pole shoe. At the instant of positive half cycle, NS at the point A and SS at point B, NR at point A, and SR at point B. Okay, this is a point A and this is point B. At this similar poles are ripples each other. Hence, Rota tries to clock, rotate in clockwise direction at the at the instant of immediate negative half cycle, SS at point A and NS at point B, and NR just away from A and SR is just away from B. So here if we observe, so this is NS scalar pole, this is SS scalar pole, N and S say at the instant. NS and N are nearby. So here there is a force develops that is a repulsion force because both are a same pole, similar pole. So as this NS is rotating its synchronous uh, in clockwise direction, this N will try to rotate in anti-clockwise direction. So it will it will slightly try to ripple. But at the next moment, in the next half second. What happens? This SS will come here and this NS will come here again. So at that time, their NS, N, SS and N will, will get an attraction force. So then it will try to attract. So at that time, the rotor will try to rotate in clockwise direction. So data poles marked by NS and SS and these are rotating its synchronous speed, say clockwise direction. And the rotor poles are at that instant situation at the point A and B are marked. So what happens? This NS and SS will keep on change and the rotor will try to rotate in clockwise and also anti-clockwise direction due to the Repulsion and attraction, repulsion and attraction force. So it will it will try to rotate at anti-clockwise direction and clockwise direction, anti-clockwise direction, clockwise direction within a uh, half of cycles of a uh, half of cycle of 50 hertz frequency. So that means it is a, a 0 0.01 second. Okay. So Within a seconds, within a seconds, the rotor tries to rotate in both the direction. So what happens due to its larger weight, the rotor's larger weight, the rotor will not rotate at all. So the two similar poles N of the rotor and NS of the stator as well as Will ripple each other and the rotor tends to rotate in anti clockwise direction. But a half a period later, stata poles having the rotated around the interchanging their positions. Under these conditions, NS attract S and SS attract N. Okay, as shown in this figure, 
owing to its large inertia it cannot instantly respond to quickly reversing tasks so it remains at the stationary mm. so the rotor does not rotate hence the sto hence the synchronous motor is said to be that it is not a self starting motor so starting the synchronous motor how we have to start the motor so we are giving the qt supply here and we know that net ea is equals to v minus eb which is equals to ia is equals to v minus eb by za and za is equals to ra plus ja this and hence the rotor tends to rotate in clockwise which is just a reverse of the first direction hence we find that due to the continuous rapid rotation of the stator force the rotor is subjected to a torque which is rapidly reversing in quick successions so the rotor is subjected to the torque which tends to move first in one direction and then in other direction the, the rotor cannot instantly respond to keep reversing the due to its large inertia and the result the rotor remains at stationary therefore the motor is not a self starting motor so a two pole rotor running at constant speed is shown here so for starting the rotor we have to follow some methods so there should be some solution for the uh, uh, self starting it either we have to use some motor uh, for the uh, rotor of a synchronous motor to start the rotor or else uh, we have to do some techniques so there are some methods uh, to follow for starting of a synchronous motor so the rotor is speeded up to synchronous uh, speed by some arrangements and then excited by a dc source so the moment this near to synchronously rotating the rotor and is excited it is magnetically locked in position with its stator so now our agenda is that uh, here with the rotor the the rotor uh, the rotating magnetic field in the stator is rotating and our rotor also should rotate in such a way that there should be happen a magnetic locking between the rotating magnetic field in the stator and the rotor ports okay so uh, how it is possible either we have to rotate a rotor uh, up to the speed of a synchronous speed so that the north pole of the stator and the south pole of the rotor will reach near speed and it may form a magnetic lock once the magnetic lock has been formed the stator uh, ma rotating magnetic field uh, the force uh, developed between these two and the torque will only rotate the rotor at that time the external machine what we have used for the rotation is not necessary and yes so this is the main agenda what we have to remember that we have to make a stator and a rotor magnetic lock so the rotor poles are engaged with the stator poles and the bolt runs synchronously in the same direction the characteristic features of the synchronous motor the synchronous motor runs at the synchronous uh, speed only because of that only we are calling this motor as synchronous motor it runs run only at one speed that is synchronous speed and it is not inherently self starting it is not a self starting motor by its own so it can be operated over a wide range of power factors both in lagging leading and also unity power factor so here the starting methods uh, So, uh, 
we observed that in a salient pole and in non salient pole a damper winding okay. so uh, that is one of the method of starting it is damper winding And the second one is by using an external motor. External motor. So these are the two types where we can use. And here these are all the steps to be taken for us starting a motor. Okay. So say example we are using a damper winding. For starting a synchronous motor so what we have done we have taken a winding in a rotor with rotor pole so rotor shoe so the damper winding has been made in a such a way that there is a slot sir there is a slot under the uh, pole shoe of the rotor in and that uh, and that slots they will put a, a copper bars and we will make it short like a induction motor, spiral cage induction motor. In spiral cage induction motor, what we are doing? We are, the, we are using the copper bars and we are short circuiting with the end rings. So what happens by this? We know already due to the lens law, very cause of its production, it will oppose its direction. So it will start rotating. So the same principle will follow when we use a damper winding. So it means that when we use a damper winding, it means that the synchronous motor is running as an induction motor. So at the starting time, the synchronous motor is running as an induction motor. And in the running condition, it is running as a synchronous motor. Means it will run at a synchronous speed once it locks up. So this damper winding will help at the starting time. So it will give a torque. So we know that. So here the damper windings. There is a slot, if you observe, there is a slot in a pole uh, shoe. So they, those pole shoes are short circuited and the, what happens here, the flux will rotate. The rotating, when we give supply to the stator, when we give supply to the stator, there will be a rotating magnetic flux will set up in a stator and which will rotate at the, say, which is rotating at the synchronous speed. Yet in this picture, it is in anti clockwise direction. Okay, so if it is rotating in anti clockwise direction while rotating, it will cut up the damper windings. So, once the damper windings are cut by the flux of a stator, so we know according to the Faraday's law, an EMF will be induced in a conductor. So, here. An EMF will be induced in the conductor of a damper winding. So as the damper winding is short circuited, so there will be existence of current. So current, here the current produced in the damper winding will oppose according to Lenz law. So why it has been opposed only due to the Due to the rotation of a magnetic field, I mean, due to the relative speed between the rotating magnetic flux and also the conductor, conductor of the damper winding. So, hence, it will start rotating in order to reduce the relative, mo relative motion between the, the rotating magnetic field of stator and the damper winding conductor. So it will start rotating, rotating, and at a certain at a certain point, what happens? 
the north pole and the south pole the north pole of a stator and south pole of the rotor will link up so there will be a magnetic locking will occur so once the magnetic locking occur then the rotor will rotate at a rotating magnetic field speed that is synchronous speed so this is one of the method uh, what we are using the second method is a uh, using an external machine so here we have to observe that we are we are exciting this uh, uh, rotor with the external dc source so now i will explain the second method that is a uh, we are using external motor for rotating this synchronous motor so uh, suppose a uh, example i have took a, a, a motor for rotating the rotor say this is this might be in a standstill position so i have uh, linked the rotor both shafts so i am rotating the uh, external rotor so the synchronous motor rotor also rotating so i will make sure that i will uh, give rotation up to 80 percentage of synchronous speed okay so till that i will rotate and after that after reaching 80 percentage then i will give excitation to the rotor so until then there is no north and south pole production uh, there is no north and south pole development at rotor in the rotor after excitation only there will be north and south poles will be formed so when i will excite this after reaching 80 percentage of speed so in order why i am doing i can even supply in the starting position but it is unnecessary of uh, the supply uh, it is based of uh, battery source also because anyhow we are using it externally so after reaching 80 percentage then i am going to give a supply of the excitation to the rotor then the formation of north and the south pole will occur and uh, what happens so here at 80 to 90 percentage of speed when it uh, forms then there is a uh, they will a lock in magnetic locking between a stator and rotor will occur so once the stator and the rotor poles have been locked so once once that is locked then i can off the external uh, motor and this will rotor will start rotating at a synchronous speed so these are the how there are the methods of starting a synchronous motor so the only thing is uh, the starting is a bit costly because we are using some external sources so here the summary this we have discussed about the principles of operation of synchronous motor and methods of starting and characteristics speed to so forth synchronous motor and also stator and rotor constructional details and types of rotors and their constructional details we'll have a small quiz on this say a 4450 hertz synchronous motor when connected to a p phase supply run set so if there is a 4450 hertz synchronous motor so at what speed it will run it will run at a synchronous speed as it is a 4 4 uh, what is the synchronous speed formula that is ns is equals to 120 f by p so if we substitute p is equals to 4 and f is equals to 50 then you will get it is a 1500 rpm okay next the direction of the rotation of the synchronous motor can be reversed by reversing so the synchronous motor direction can be reversed by reversing current to the field winding supply phase sequence and polarity of the rotor poles 
is a supply phase sequence. If, for uh, example, uh, it is rotating, okay. uh, the motor is rotating, suddenly what I have done, I have changed the phase supply. Then, already it is a magnetic block. Once if I change the phase supply, what happens? The rotating magnetic field in a state R will start rotating in the reverse direction. Now, hence the rotor also will start rotating in the reverse direction. So these are some of the uh, frequently asked questions that is principle of operation and characteristics of the synchronous motor. And yes, sir. a stator frame is used for holding the armature stampings and windings, holding the rotor stampings, holding the armature stampings. Rotor stampings is only for rotor. The core is laminated to minimize the eddy current. Of copper loss for hysteresis losses, we will use a silicon steel for mechanical losses. There will be other procedures, and for copper losses, there will be other procedures. So, here, Sally and the coal is used only for low and the medium speeds. Okay. Cylindrical type of the rotor is suitable for high speed application. And in a synchronous machine, if the field is circuit is open. Okay. If in a synchronous machine, if the field circuit is open, means that means uh, we are uh, suddenly stop the excitation. What happens if suddenly stop the excitation? So if the suddenly excitation stops, then there will be the north pole and south pole formation in the rotor will not be there because it is an uh, Electromagnets. So, when there is no electricity passing in that uh, piece, uh, then it won't act as a magnet. So, so what happens? Either the motor stops, runs at same speed, runs at more than the rate of speed, runs at the next speed, and stops. Because there is no pulse. So, where is the magnetic lock? Fine. Four for this session, this session regarding the construction of details and the working principle uh, has been clearly understood to you. If any doubts, you can uh, uh, put me in a comment box. Thank you so much for listening.